Scaled Creations asks a really terrific and practical question, and I have some practical answers. Uh, they want to know, what is the true cost to entry for owning a mill? Specifically, I believe they're asking about mini mill. After looking at mini mills online, I started watching videos reviewing them, and one thing I noticed was the array of gauges that were being used to, to determine runout and to true the mills up to a decent spec. When I started shopping for gauges, for machining and other accessories, I realized the cost to entry was much higher than I thought. Okay, uh, what do you think is needed to get started, and what is the true cost of entry for getting started with machining on a mini mill? Great question. And the answer is different today than I would have given 20 years ago. Uh, and it's mostly because, uh, it's mostly because the cheapest version of the things that you can buy now are way better than the cheapest versions you were able to buy 20 years ago. Um, and that's a net benefit to all of us. Um, it's largely because manufacturing processes out of China uh, and the Pacific Rim have just kept on getting less and less expensive and the product that they're turning out is better and better. Um, but you asked for the true cost of entry. So the main gauge that you see a lot of people use uh, to true up or indicate in their mill is one of these, this little lever gauge. Uh, and these come in various types of accuracy. This is a Mitutoyo. This goes to three zeros and a one. That is uh, one ten thousandth. Am I right about that? Yes. Uh, that is one ten thousandth. This is a fine. Th this is this is my really good one, and this was expensive. This was well over a hundred bucks. It has a ruby tip. Um, it's incredibly precise. But you don't need. If you're buying a mini mill, and I, on a personal level, having played with a couple of different versions, I recommend the Precision Matthews brand. I really, really, the the, the one they sent me, uh, and they didn't sponsor anything, but they sent it to me, uh, came very, very true out of the box. Um, and in general, the build quality was excellent. But these gauges don't have to cost that much. And if you're a beginning, machinist, machine operator, and you're called Scaled Creations, so I'm guessing you're milling small things and you're not necessarily doing them out of hardened steel. There's a gauge, I found one of these on Amazon, which we will post in the description, um, for 30 bucks. And that'll be accurate to within a thousandth, give or take. That's plenty for model work, plenty. Um, there are a few other things that you would need as the basic tool set to have with a mill. Uh, one would be a gauge. Another would be a thing to hold on to that gauge. Um, I like this one. Stefan Gotzevinter uh, converted me over to this little half moon type of indicator for its versatility and how close you can get into your work. Um, these are really, really not that expensive. Uh, we'll try and include links to all of these things in the description. Um, a magnetic base to go with this so that you can clamp it to the table, use magnet to clamp it to the table and indicate stuff is also useful. Um, high speed set, okay, everything that I'm mentioning here can be bought in three different ways uh, in the big buckets. One way is you can buy the top version of that right now, in which case, you know, you can spend 500 bucks on a crazy accurate one of these, uh, or 30 bucks on the low end. There's also Craigslist and eBay. Uh, however, if you don't have a lot of knowledge of what these tools should like, it's hard to know, should look like, it's hard to know that you're looking at an excellent piece of kit when you're looking through eBay auctions. So those are a little bit more caveat emptor. Um, Besides the magnetic base and the holder and the indicator, which are all ways to basically uh, uh, make sure the parts of your machine are square to each other and to themselves and running true and parallel, um, a set of high-speed tools, a set of uh, tools, oh, right, right, I'm like, when you're debating whether or not to get uh, what kind of tool, I'm going to tell you that a basic set of high-speed steel end mills will totally suffice. Uh, you'll also need a reasonable drill index and parallels uh, and a vise. Okay, I know I've been bouncing all around. So let's say the very base level to entry is indicator and some things to hold on to it. Um, 
a drill index, a magnetic base, a high-speed steel end mills, a vise. A vise is one you really, you really could clamp almost anything to your mill and start working. You want really nice flat sides to the vise. So you don't want a vise with a, with, a, with a knurled pattern on the inner jaws. You want to be holding on to work with smooth jaws, and the smooth jaws are how you'll indicate in your vise and make sure it's parallel to the spindle. Um, but again, a vise doesn't have to be, you don't have to spend 600, 800 bucks on a Kurt vise. Uh, if it's a mini mill, you can spend way, way, way less than that. And a Chinesium vise on eBay, totally fine for your first vise. Um, a set of parallels, also you don't need to go expend for the high-end set of parallels. All of the cheap versions of these things, parallels and vices and stuff, um, are gonna come at a pretty high quality finish. Uh, and within enough tolerance to do the work that you want to do. Um, ah, yes, sorry. One other thing. You can buy all sorts of expensive gauges for figuring out the position of your spindle. None of them are as good as this thing. This is a basically a wiggler, and you use this, you bring this up to the edge of your material, and... What'll happen is it gets very true and gets cylindrical. It lines up with the main body of the, of the post here, and then it kicks to the side. And when it kicks to the side, you stop moving your hand wheel, and you are at the exact edge of your, of your thing minus half the width of the, of the indicator. I have found this to be accurate to within like 10 microns, uh, less than half a thousandth of an inch. You don't need to get any fancier than these, and these are like $10, and a $10 one will be completely fine for your first one. Um, all that being said, I love the forum Practical Machinist. Uh, almost every tool I've ever bought has been discussed among the members of Practical Machinist, and there are lots of old timers and experienced machine operators on that site who lend great amounts of advice. Scaled Creations, good luck to you. Um, I can't overstress how much I love this thing. I've been using a Hamer coaxial gauge uh, uh, for about five years. I, you know, they're expensive. They're like five, four, five hundred dollars, and I've loved it. And then I was watching. Did I already say this a couple weeks ago? I can't remember if I did. I was watching Stefan Godzinder do this amazing indicating video, and he was talking about ways to indicate. And then he talked about coaxial indicators, and he was like, "I'm not discussing them because they're garbage." And I was like, "Garbage." And I took mine out and I just inspected it, and I ran it through its paces, and it was 15 thou out of true. Okay, oh, it made me so crazy. So there's a point that comes out of here, and my last one broke, but the point is connected to its threading by ceramic, so that if you bump this at all, it shatters. That's how they maintain that it's perfect. Mine had bumped and was 15 thou out of true and hadn't shattered, and it explained why I was getting all these errant readings on my mill. Anyway, I was like mad about that. And then I pulled out my $15 wiggler and I ran it through its paces. And every time I tested it, I came within half a thou of truing up. And that is plenty close enough for me. Um, I love these little things. If I'm missing anything, let me know in the comments uh, because th that is a great and important sort of question to answer. And it's different for everybody depending on the machine, depending on your skill level, et cetera. I, so I could buy an old Sears lathe way out of true and make it sing, but that's from thousands of hours of using lathes. Um, there is one video I really, really love. Clickspring does most of, Chris at Clickspring does most of his work on a shearline, shearline lathe. Um, and these are not super, super tuned machines, but they are tunable. And he was able to tune his to be insanely accurate, to remove the run out to the micron level. Uh, and he walks you exactly through how he does it. It's really, really informative. I learned a lot watching that video. <laughs> Farrell's prop says, what's the favorite thing you've 3D printed this year? I'm gonna bring it over into the frame. <laughs> um, my favorite thing I have 3D printed this year is this. And some of the some of the Wally builders have seen parts and pieces floating around the cave in the background of shots. I have yet to film a single frame, but 
in the next couple of years, I would like to execute a full size Wally. Um, and this is one of his eyes printed in sintered nylon. And it is, it is such a beautiful part. I want to tell you that like, after I cleared and cleaned this part, I showed it to Norm and his response was the same as my was, mine, which was, oh, this is the scale to print in. <laughs> it is like, it's a part, it's a thing. It's not a simulacrum of a thing. It's, uh, yeah. These have been floating around for a few weeks now and they just make me so excited. I love handing them to people. Here, check out, check this out. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I wanted to briefly mention that you could become a tested member. I know everybody is competing for you to become a member of their thing. What I want to express to you is that the tested membership has become such an important part of the tested family. We get tremendous feedback from the tested members and they expand the stories that we can tell and the things that we have access to. And you can become a part of it right now by clicking on the link below. See you in the chat.